we're going to go over some landlord responsibilities. Good afternoon. So were you aware that you have responsibilities as a landlord? I suspect my audience is, uh, is uh, you know, what would I, what would be the word? They are um, sophisticated enough to know that they have responsibilities. And I'm sure that everyone that's watching my video knows that, uh, that uh, it's important to, to be a good landlord or else you'll have problems. So we don't have any slumlords in this group, I'm sure. Um, we've, we've seen stories in the past uh, year that I've, I've covered uh, of bad landlording, and there's all kinds of different ways uh, that can happen. And so I thought we'd change it up a little bit today. We'd go over some things that uh, landlords need to do and their responsibilities so that you don't become a terrible landlord. And I don't think that people start out when they rent a place, when, they're, when they own a place and they rent it out. I don't think they start out that way. I think everybody goes in with a with a clear uh, mind, and then it just kind of it kind of goes from there. So I wanted to go over some stuff with you. Um, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so just know that your best bet is always to have legal representation in case things get out of hand, and you probably want to know that ahead of time. Um, some of the things I typically see with uh, regards to landlords is that some are just terrible people to begin with, or they get in over their head, or they just have no clue about what can be reasonably expected from them. So. This is just kind of a quick thing, kind of get used to uh, uh, some of the things you might want to pay attention to. So number one, um, you need to know what the landlord tenant law is for where your rental unit currently is. Uh, so that means you need to look up the relevant laws related to the rental of your unit. The common defense of not knowing it was a law doesn't work in the real world. So uh, like in St. Louis, if you rent a property in the city, uh, there may be different rules than if you lease a property in the county. Uh, it's not that hard to find out what the, the laws are. You just have to look it up. So uh, that's number one. Number two, you should be able to put together a lease. Don't try to rent a property without some sort of written lease. Uh, it's in your best defense against a tenant, and it also sets the standards for both the tenant and the landlord to follow. So uh, like in St. Louis and Missouri, the statute of fraud said you have to have a lease, uh, written lease for at least one year uh, to be enforced. Now, do people get around it with Airbnbs and stuff like that? I guess. I guess, but last time I was a property manager, we didn't even have to deal with Airbnbs. They weren't a thing yet. Um, but you know, that lease, there's there's some things that you can expect on the lease. One of the things that a lot of uh, landlords expect, landlords have this expectation that tenants are going to uh, use the unit responsibly. And there's nothing wrong with that expectation, but uh, in the lease, it'll say the tenant's responsible for changing the furnace filters. Do tenants typically change furnace filters throughout their tenancy? No. When some do, should you be happy? Yes. Um, sometimes there's a, a clause about uh, lawn lawn maintenance, so cutting the grass. Uh, if you're an, if you're a landlord and you give your tenant a land, uh, if, if you give them a lawnmower, um, they may not want to cut the grass, uh, even if it's their responsibility. So, uh, what I would say is, you know, know what's in the lease, and then just understand that there's certain behavior that some uh, some tenants aren't going to aren't going to pay attention to. So either, you know, cater your lease towards reality or um, just don't be surprised when things don't go well. Number three, if you have agreed to lease a property on a certain date, you need to have the property available for lease that day. So let's just say you want to have a property for lease uh, and you have an agreement written out January 1st is the, is the move-in day. Well, then it's your responsibility as a landlord to have that, uh, that unit ready on January 1st. Uh, you know, Tenants could be moving from across the country and they expect to be able to move into their unit. If you delay, you're out of compliance with the lease agreement. And one of the things I've noticed when I was a property manager was that if things start off bad, they usually don't get better. Uh, one of the worst things you can do is not have a unit ready for lease and move in. And so kind of in, in tying with that is your rental unit also needs to be in a safe, habitable condition and it needs to be kept that way throughout the lease. So if a major component goes out, say the furnace in the middle of the winter, you need to be able to uh, have somebody on hand who can respond to the repair quickly. Uh, the same thing is true with water leaks. If left on, water can be devastating. Um, tenants expect that you will take care of repairs in a quick and efficient manner, and they're not gonna wanna wait weeks or months to get a repair. Now, I don't care if it's a, a, a multi-thousand dollar a, a month rental, or it's you know many hundreds, you still have to be able to be able to live in that, that house or that unit. So. 
keep that in mind. Um, it's not okay to just have safety hazards and things like that go on during the, uh, the tenancy. Uh, number five, the tenant has a right to be left alone. That means you can't barge in unannounced. Uh, there's nothing in a lease agreement that says your tenant has to be your best friend. Um, it's, there's actually a right. It's called the right of peaceful enjoyment. So, you know, certain things, I mean, just work with your tenant. Communicate with your tenant. If you're going to have a repair person come in, you can't tell your tenant that they have to sit there all day and wait for them. It doesn't work. Um, it's just, it's bizarre what some people expect of their tenants, and they don't realize that they're infringing on the tenant's rights. Uh, number six, make sure your property is up to date and, and keeps with uh, local building codes. So, for example, in St. Louis County, like tenants are going to want to have screens on their windows when it gets hot. Now, you may never ever open the windows. You may always use air conditioning, uh, but the, the screens are there for a reason. It's supposed to keep the, the mosquitoes at bay and the other bugs. Um, tenants want to feel safe knowing that their door locks are functioning properly, uh, window locks are, are functioning properly. You're, you're responsible uh, for those types of things. You're also responsible for, you know, furnaces and uh, electric. Everything needs to be kept to the local building code. Um, and then you do have a responsibility as a tenant number seven or as a landlord is you should you should find out. Uh, uh, should you find out that criminal activity is taking place in your rental, you're obligated to report it to the police. Uh, why? Well, perhaps the neighbors don't want to deal with the criminal activity. You know, if you can, if you're renting out a house, for instance, in a subdivision, I mean, uh, neighbors are already going to be a little bit on edge. Um, so one way you can be a good land, landlord is make sure that if there's some sort of criminal activity, report it. Um, don't just let it go on. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, Keep in mind that if you do hire a property manager, they aren't allowed to break the law either. So uh, I see a lot of times where people uh, people ask things on the application that uh, can get them in trouble with fair housing laws. Uh, so it's best to either hire a very knowledgeable property manager or just you know keep in mind that this could be an issue coming up. And then number nine, as a landlord, you're responsible for the eradication of pets, pests, not pets. Don't kill their pets. That will that will make them very upset. <laughs> uh, that means if cockroaches invade your unit, you're responsible. Uh, when I was in college, I lived in an apartment complex in Springfield, Missouri, um, that had a roach infestation, and it was bad. Um, I would sit there and I'd be watching TV, and like cockroaches would like walk across the floor in front of me, or walk across the table. It was terrible. Um, it was cheap rent and everything, but there is an expectation that you do have to at least make an effort to get rid of the cockroaches. Um, same thing with mice, vermin. Um, it is your responsibility as a landlord to take care of those things. Um, finally, finally, uh, you ever, this is something that I've noticed. It's you have a responsibility to return the security deposit at the end of the tenancy if it's warranted. I don't know how many times I've seen landlords receive security deposits in the beginning and then just count it as income. That money is not free money. If the tenant does a great job, give them their money back. Um, you know, if you follow this, you're going to go a long way into being a, a good landlord, uh, not a slumlord, and you're not going to be, the DOJ isn't going to be writing or isn't going to be suing you on for housing laws. Um, you're not going to, you're not going to have to worry about terrible tenants. Uh, one thing I would say that we always did and we had a pretty good success with is if you screen your tenants up front, I mean, know who's going to live in the unit, have those people's names on the lease, uh, if they're over 18 and, uh, Make sure that, you know, you only get one shot to rent your unit, okay, to the right people. And if, if you're, uh, if someone's got a bad history that doesn't, doesn't look real positive. But uh, those are just some things that I, that I saw and kind of wanted to, to put out there. It's, it's not rocket science, um, but just, just know that, um, you know, there's a relation there between the tenant and the landlord, and that uh, as a landlord, you can go a long way into uh, making the tenancy last and and go well, um, which which will make you more money and which will which will be better for you in the long run. Uh, so that's all I had. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments, put them down in the in the comment section below. Uh, I'm not going to be able to answer if you know. If your tenant has mold on the on the ceiling, what should you do? I don't, I don't call somebody. Don't call me.
I'm not, I'm not your property manager, but, uh, but I'd, I'd still like to see some comments. So thank you again, and I will catch you on the next one.